Okay, it's a nice bright Saturday morning. Windy and sunny, nice and cool. Good for solar and wind power. Unfortunately, my tower is still empty from since that hurricane never really get around to um, put them back up because I figured they needed some attention and I was disappointed after I took them to do some repair and um, nobody seems to really want to get into it and touch it and help me to pry those covers off and change the bearing put it back together and it seems a little bit um, a little tight it's back together I can't turn it with my can't turn it with my hand and um, I'm waiting to put it back up then I discover I can't find my my big washer can't find any one of them don't know where I put them and um, I looked and I looked and I don't know where they are so a little bit disappointed and um, so on the blades the broken blades yeah these it's all repaired it's all repaired so I have three blades here Shoot it a little bit more and put it back together. All right, so they all repair and they all um, weld in the crack that was there. Okay, so this is the hub for it. Hub for that one. Blades are okay. So I am going to have to make some stiff dishes in to get my turbine and wind power back up because the wind is good so far for the year there's a lot of wind in the in the region I don't know why but we have wind 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 every day every night and I'm grieving because I can't get to utilize it to to charge my battery and even to use it overnight So to really understand the work of art behind this generator, you really have to get close up. As you can see, the magnets and uh, the copper wire work together. The magnets, you have them arranged in a way to create a a dense magnetic field line of flux so each magnet here would be arranged north pole and south pole north pole and south pole north pole and south pole configuration so they I think they're staggered to create that effect of that um, dense magnetic field that when it's spinning the copper wire will intercept that field cutting the line of flux and as it spins faster creates more voltage and that's what happened here and to have two separate pieces inside here independently and then um, they will all come out in this conductors here for one side of it and this is the other side so in fact one side could be faulty not producing anything and you still get some production out of this it's three phase 
it's also three phase wild AC so now you have to use a, a rectifier feeding the, these lines into a rectifier and then you tap out the DC voltage they cannot be connected directly to anything other than rectify and to have this working from that um, wind power wind generation it's really a work of art for this size as I said this is the only one that I see around here that I can um, handle with ease I would not want to go with any bigger size unless I have a a bigger tower stronger tower and well secured but for this one it's pretty good so the wild AC feed AC coming out of it it's a three phase AC and the way this is arranged they are 120 degree about a phase now following each other 120 degrees apart the frequency would be the same and the amplitude would be the same to feed into that rectifier and uh, this is a 2448 volts circuit and eventually I think I'm going to go up to the 4896 then I'm going to connect it in series to see if I can get at least I will have more voltage but to see if I can generate more power in a lower revolution And I believe that will happen. I don't know if the 4896 volts will have more copper wound in. Or. I, I don't know how to do that. Wait and see what I have here. And then. Um, it will just work. Because the copper. Is stationary here. And the magnet will. Spin inside here. Which will cut that magnetic flux and induce voltage across the copper wires coming out through this and I said they already arranged already arranged to do exactly that so it's induction magnetic electromagnetic induction that's how this is working that's the process behind this electromagnetic induction generated from the wind so it's wind energy wind energy to turn this on hydro if you have a good source of hydro hydro waterfall down slope or whatever or if you have a good source of water running all the time you could um, use this for hydro so it's really wind and hydro same design except you will have a, a different plate over here for the hydro to connect to other things but um, as I said um, before the bearings inside here will be the one that tend to create any kind of faults of something sound like it's grounding up inside there mainly the bearings that are going so we've seen that and um, I'm going to have this bearing change and get it set up again and it will be all back together in one piece and working so I'm spending enough time having a close-up look in this because when it's up and running 
<laughs> you don't get to it anymore. You don't see it anymore. You don't see it anymore. And yeah, 14 magnets. Maybe if it was bigger, you'll have more magnet to create that flux density. And um, bigger magnetic field. So right up inside there. You can see it. Copper wire wounded because um, I think the copper would not be attracted to the magnet. So that's why they have to use this copper wire instead of other conductors, maybe. I think I'm pretty sure about that. Because if it was any other material and it's stuck to the magnet how are you gonna spin this now oh this is gonna spin it just steady and lock up in one piece so something special about copper copper conductor and magnet huh? common sense will tell you that if you bring any other metal here okay any other metal no, the, not that one. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can find something here. Uh -huh. Okay, I got a piece of copper here. Got a piece of copper wire here. and Nothing. Not sticking to the magnet. Not sticking at all to the magnet here. Hmm? Any other stuff like a nail or so? Nail or a screw? Ah, okay, see that? Mm. So if you have this material here, round around here, it will just stop to the end, you could never spin this, right? So there's something in the copper there that is not attracted to the magnet. You got a north pole, you got a south pole, each one is stronger than the other one. Right? So, as I said, if you, this is a copper wire, be a piece of copper wire, it's not sticking to that. Right? See? So, the copper is the best thing to use for that generation, for the state of core. Eh? Okay. So, having said all of that, I'm satisfied that I get a good peek into this. Poke it out and see exactly what's in there. And uh, yeah, so when it's up and running, I would not have to wonder what it's doing inside there. This stuff spins and spins and spins and it create that, um, cut that line of flux in the magnetic field. It's like the magnetic field in this one is cutting its own self because this is inside. It could be also a range where this is spinning and the magnets are fixed. Right? So, that's all for now until I get the others. I know won't be able to look into them like this, but for sure, I'm going to put them up, have them produce a different set of voltage, because it'll be high in voltage, 48 is the minimum, this is 24, 48 volts, it depends on how I arrange it through the rectifier, and it's also maybe because of the way the amount of copper turns here, that can only limit you to 24 volts on each side. Yeah. 24 volts on each side. So the other one, it will be 48 on each side. Okay. So let's see what happened there. And, um, yeah. See you later. <laughs>